yeah yeah <laughs> i was dying um and and actually it's funny because i was like uh i was looking at like a, a, like cleaning up my setup i was like you know it does help to have the whiteboard where you can show stuff and i was like i gotta step up my mic game and all that so mm-hmm. i feel that I feel um all right guys you know, it's funny. I always, we always say guys when I'm like, nobody is sitting around in a group of people. Like, right. <laughs> it's always like one person by themselves. Yeah. Right. But uh, anyways, guy or girl or guys, if you happen to be sitting in a group uh, for some reason, watching us or listening to us, uh, we are here today on the Ram Beer Singer of Fat Loss and pretty much whatever I feel like talking about. <laughs> And uh, we got my main man, Jared Hamilton, on. What's good? Uh, I, I was looking back the last time that we did this for on my podcast was uh, it's like 2018. Dude, uh, Alj just made a, a big post about about like the first time I had him on was like two years ago, and I'm like, holy shit! Like, That's crazy. <laughs> I know, dude. Um, well, so. Let me just, we're just going to dive right in. Uh, Let's go. Uh, I'm going to assume that people know who you are. I'm going to assume that people know who you are because, you know, if they're listening to this and following me, then they've probably seen, okay, I know who this guy is. So, but uh, first question for you, what's, what's been like some of the biggest changes in the last two years? April 10th is the exact date, 2018. Mm. So it's coming up exactly on two years. That's crazy, bro. Uh, biggest changes in, in specifically for you as a you know uh, uh, coach in this world of fitness and nutrition, and then also just in general in the world of fitness uh, that you've seen and that you've noticed. That's a really good question, because um, I, th- I actually think there's a lot of a lot of uh, merit in asking that because if if you know one two years go by or fuck six months goes by and shit's not changing, then you're like you're dying. You know what I mean? But, um, I would say there's a, a lot of, there's been probably a lot of stuff that I, uh, that I thought was that, uh, that uh, I now, like I used to like, let's say uh, coaching modalities. Like I used to think like programs were designed this way and fat loss was this way. I think in this one thing was this way when like I realized I was wrong and I'm like, Oh shit, that's new that I, I, I'm going to change my way of thinking on that or, Oh, well, Oh, I've been telling people that, but I guess that's wrong. So like, like a lot of stuff, like just, the more I learn, the more I grow, um, just from like an information side, like, and even in terms of like building strength or getting lean or, you know, whatever, that kind of stuff, just from like, I wouldn't say basic fundamental, but just like a lot of that kind of stuff, like fat lossy strength stuff, the way that I coach is a little bit different. Um, to be honest, I folk. hmm? No, go ahead. Um, I was going to say specifically, like there's been a lot of like mental shifts that I, uh, I, with a lot of my coaching clients, I lead more now from the front of the mental aspect and then physical, I don't want to say it takes care of itself, but like before, for example, it was just like, oh, just eat, eat, eat right, train hard, you're good, da, 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 da. But like so much of the bullshit's right here. So now with almost like, for example, almost with everyone I coach, it's, it, it all starts here. Like priority number one is fixing relationships with foods or fixing certain mentalities that aren't serving them or like changing identities because everything stems from that. And then instead of leaving that stuff in the dust and just like, no, just eat like this and train like this and you'll be good. But then, you know, stuff like that has, has changed a huge amount from the way I coach. Um, and then also the way that I even just function myself on my day to day. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, that's, that's perfect. I was, that's what I was going to ask is like, and does anything specific come to mind? Um, and so, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's been a, a gradual shift from, from day one for us too, is like, it all started with it's all about, okay, what are we training? What's the nutrition? What's the science? Blah, blah, blah. Making it perfect on that physical side. But then we've, Mm -hmm. you know, more and more over the years gone towards like, well, you're right. If, uh, if you're thinking or you're, you know, who you're being is off, then it's going to be, you can have the best programs and it's not going to really matter. Right. Um, so uh what does is there other things like specific things that come to mind because i know there's there's a couple of like funny ones that come to my mind that i was like and i'm really glad you said that that goes that speaks very highly of you as a coach and and as a person 
where you're like, you know, if you're, if you are staying the same and thinking the same, then there's like, is there should be growth happening. Right. Sure. Cause a lot of people get married to like, Oh, well I, this is how we always do it. So this is what, you know, we're going to continue mm-hmm. to do. So yeah. Uh, Dude, any- face, Facebook time hops are like the worst for that. Like <laughs> I had like a Facebook time hop from when I like just started coaching. So it was like a post from like eight years ago. And I said, first and it was it was I like it was like I had a face palm moment I'm like I made a post that said get up straight in the morning don't eat anything and you have to do fasted so you go right into a fat burning <laughs> state and it's the only way to lose fat and I'm like I'm a fucking idiot I'm like what the hell and then I like keep scrolling and I'm like I told somebody like you have to eat every two hours because it boosts your metabolism fire and I'm like holy shit and so what I would screenshot it and put it on my story and be like look guys sure. I haven't thought this bullshit yet that's good that's what i was gonna say is like sometimes those can be embarrassing but they're also so helpful for people to yeah see. dude yeah. um i think as a whole um a lot of the stuff i used to try to hide like just stuff that i'm going through right now um i used to think because i and it's a balance right like a lot of people like being more authentic is also kind of trendy as well and a lot of people now will just use social media to just like woe is me and just get attention but then there's like that balance of like no i'm going through some shit and here's how I'm going to go through it. And it might help you a little bit in your journey of going through shit. So um, I've been trying to be a little bit more open about like everything. Like if I, you know, not feeling so hot, like, like, like the other day I made a post on like, I out of nowhere woke up with like copious amounts of anxiety and I never wake up with anxiety. So I made a post on how, like what I do when I wake up with anxiety, not looking for people to feel sorry for me, but just like there's people that wake up with anxiety. And the more I start talking about stuff like that, like the more mental health or with, anxiety or just like being a little bit you know more compassionate or just a little bit less hard on yourself um i've been talking a little bit more about that kind of stuff but then you know less you know like oh no the best five booty workouts (laughs) you know just because i feel like there's been more of a shift at least in the way that i see stuff that people need more than just the five booty workouts yeah than just the five booty workouts now like we talked about on your pod or on on, uh, on my podcast don't give me, there's still merit for like the information. Like we yeah. still need like the proper way to periodize or like the proper way to like eat in a calorie deficit. But, and I, I got a course I'm working on that's going to take me a fucking hot minute. It's called, it's on my, it takes up a whole fourth foot of my whiteboard right now. Um, it's called <laughs> the psychology of fat loss. And I like right now, I probably have probably 40 different subjects listed that are all in the headspace stuff. Like whether food anxiety, all or nothing mentalities, the knowing doing gap the motivation balance uh, and discipline, but motivation versus inspiration and relationship with the scale, relationships with your food. Like I'm just literally going down the list. Dude. And um, none of it has to do with calorie deficit. Nothing, none of it has to do with like squats, but it's because I think too many people, and I had a mentor of mine uh, a couple of years ago start to share this. And a lot of this stuff that I started studying and reading and learning from isn't like really taking full effect until like right now. Um, I never thought about actions are like the way in the future. Like as in what I like the action stage, everyone's like, well, what's the newest diet? What should I be working out? What should I be doing? Where it's like actions are important, but like what precedes actions? Okay. Habits. What precedes habits? Thoughts. What precedes thoughts? Identities and belief systems. Like, okay, so why don't we attack your identity and belief systems and then go on this, this journey together versus just like, Oh, just eat 1500 calories and strength and treat it three days a week and you'll be fine. So be yeah, that's, that's really interesting. And which, by the way, so is that part of the, the course you shared the other day or is that going to be a different one? This is a different one. So the course right. I shared the other day, I had like, uh, they, uh, I was asking my tribe, like right now, what would they like more? Like, cause, uh, cause they got it, they got it for free. And so I, um, they, I, I basically said, look, I'm working on this really big course all about psychology and headspace and all the mental stuff. But then I also wanted to simplify like the immediate questions people want to ask, like, all right, I'm doing this. How do I get in a deficit? How do I make sure my deficit's right? Hey, how do I do this forever? Um, And that one didn't quite take me as long. And there was a little bit more demand on their end for it. So I just did that one Um, because that one was like three videos. This one literally might be 40 videos. No, that's that's dope. I like that because that's kind of also answered the question of, you know, that topic where we discussed like, um, uh, yes, there's all this other stuff, 
but uh, maybe sometimes the practical thing is the right yeah. move. At the, you know, because there's mm-hmm. people like that. There's people who will be like, either they'll just do what you say, so they'll get the results, which mm-hmm. is great because they're still moving. Or they're like, I'm willing to suspend all of my thinking and follow yeah. what you're telling me to do because I'm believing you and as the expert and sure. just do it right. So I like that. I like that. Cause I, and then I think for sure, like if anybody is like, um, uh, uh, in any of those stages, definitely, I, you know, I would recommend check those out because you need both of those mm-hmm. pieces of the well, And even, even like in that, that course that we're referencing, like, especially in the last video, cause the last video was titled uh, macro guidelines for happiness. Um, ener- I'm sorry, energy, happiness, and sustainability. So like, we dove into like headspace stuff too. Like you can't, I don't know. I, I, you know, to be honest, I think that's one of the other big shifts that I, I've made over these last couple of years is before I was all about um, optimal. And I use that word a lot. Like, no, the optimal way to design a program, the optimal way to have your macros, the apt- absolute way to do this. But then like it hit me in the face that like, hey, we're dealing with real people who don't live optimal lives. So like optimal night might not be optimal in a a less optimal program that they love to death and could do for the next 20 years now becomes optimal. And so that's, that's anymore how, to be honest, how I even, you know, view my own stuff, even shoot dude, like, like with Johnny, like when, when Johnny and I first started working together um, with, with, with our stuff where it's like, dude, like I, like, yeah, I want to get lean and get strong. But like right now, jujitsu is my thing more than anything. I enjoy that way more than strength training. So like, let's make my jujitsu game badass. And so he's like, bet let's go. And then, um, and that it's just that same kind of thing where it's like, it's really, it evolved, everything should be. Man. Yeah. And it's, and it's okay for goals to change, yeah. you know, and because interest to change and, you know, obviously there's an extreme to that, but you know, I think that plays a big role as well. Yeah. I, I think that's a really, really good point because a lot of times, and that was our conversation. So for anybody who doesn't know, uh, Jared's been working with us, uh, and coach Johnny from San Jose Barbell has been coaching him for, um the last what is it been like eight seven eight years? Uh, yeah seven or seven or eight or whatever seven it's or eight fucking, months. fucking amazing man um and when we first talked it was specifically about hitting those big numbers getting those yeah. numbers up and then it evolved and you know now we're at a different place and like that, that's that's important and i like how you balance that where it's like triple threat yeah. <laughs> now, now we had an injury. Now we're, now we're moving, you know, evolving and adapting. Um, but you're right because one thing that we have on our wall uh, from Dan John is uh, the goal is to keep the goal the goal. Yeah. And sometimes people start doing something, and this could be on both sides. Like they'll start off being like, "Hey, I want to, you know, get strong and lose fat and look great," and then they'll become stuck or married to doing a particular mm-hmm. exercise or a particular thing. And they don't even know why they're doing it. And it's like, uh, you know, you got to constantly pull yourself yeah. out of what's going on so you can observe and, you know, kind of assess where you're at, yeah. which direction you're going. And are you legitimate? Like, are you using the right stuff for the right moment? And uh, are you being consistent enough? Because yeah. you're right. It could go to the extreme the other way where you're just like, oh, well, I'm going to change every, you know, you you end up changing what your focus mm-hmm. is like every, you know. Two days or something yeah, stupid. Like, well, and, and, when, and when you and I originally had that first conversation, when I, when I shot you an application, you guys an application over for coaching, um, the, even the stuff, and I think this is important for everybody listening that, um, like keep the goal, the goal, but, but the plan of attack is obviously going to change because at the end of the day, the original goal, like when we, you and I first spoke, it was, I just, I wasn't strong and I wanted to be really strong. Um, but at the end of the day, it was, you asked me like, well, why do you want to be strong? Like, why do you want to be leaner and stronger? Like, what's the point? Um, and it came back to like, I don't represent my role as a coach good enough. And there's an ethical issue. Um, and I wasn't showing up in my life the best way that I could for what I feel is authentic and what I should be doing. Um, and that was the reason like the, the, it came back to be like, the goal is, wasn't necessarily to get stronger, get lean. It's the goal was to be a really good coach. And right now me being weak and fat as a coach was not being a good coach. So I had to lead from the front and that's when I, I hit you guys. And I'm like, I need to also like 
consume more of what I sell, if we're being totally honest. You know, if you're a car salesman and you work at a Ford dealership, but you pull up in a Honda, like people can be like, what, what's up with that, bro? Or like you sell, you know, you work at GNC, but you buy your stuff's online. Like, yeah. what's up with that, bro? Oh, like, yeah. come on now. <laughs> and so for me, it was the goal um, was actually just to whatever I needed to do to be the best coach I could be, because that's what I feel like I'm put on this earth to do. And then the, the plan of action changed. The, at first it was like, well, why don't we, why we get your body fat down before we get stupid strong? Yeah. And then right now it's fucking cr crimping, or, <laughs> crimping around on, on crutches because of my knee injury. But then like, as soon as we get back in the swing of things, I'll be back into probably li lifting heavy. And just, yeah. I think you're, you, you made a really good point that to keep the goal, the goal, but you know, the facets around it, it's okay to change when it's appropriate. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, it's, um, it, it's, Sorry. You got a dog in the gym. Dogs. There's a, there's a really, awesome. there's a super cute uh, dog. It's a German shepherd and pit bull. I've never seen it uh, or seen one before. And uh, it's like the perfect dog size. So it, she's in there barking up a storm. That's awesome. Uh, but um, great. Now, the, now I forgot what I was going to say, but uh, <laughs> uh what was the last thing that you were talking about? Uh, uh, we were talking about how my goal was the goal of, of really be, yeah. being the best coach I could be. And my actions and leadership level was what was suffering. And, you know, so uh, what, like you were, you felt like you were, weren't in integrity with yourself. And so, yeah. you know, I, I really like, it's so awesome to see kind of like the stuff that you're doing and sharing. Um, on so many levels, you know, even earlier you're talking about used to be, and I used to be the same way. There's still things that I'm like, okay, well, and I'm going to ask you a question about this later, but there's like things that I wouldn't share like on social media because right. I thought it wasn't, it wasn't like helpful to the person. Right. Mm -hmm. Or I was embarrassed, whatever it might be. And, um, and to see, you know, you sharing like, okay, look, the, the YouTube video that you put out recently was very, very good. Um, you know, oh, about like about I, your knee. I blew my knee. Now what? That? Yeah. yeah. It, and it's, it's really awesome because it shows, you know, uh, number one, you like how you're thinking, how you're approaching things, but also you made a point of like, it's not a reason for you to throw in the towel because you could very easily do that, which is what a lot of people do. And yeah you know, besides the physiological standpoint of that's the worst thing you could do for healing. It's just mm -hmm. like, it's not helpful to you, uh, to your own, um, well-being. And, and again, you, right. not that you know it, some people don't know it, but they're out of integrity with themselves and that doesn't feel good. They know yeah. they're not living up to what is truly possible for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and what's funny is I, I, uh, he didn't, I don't even think we had this conversation yet. Um, Johnny in my last conversations, what prompted that video? It wasn't, uh, he didn't say, bro, you need to do a YouTube video. But him and I were talking, we just had a, a coaching call, like a, or like a check-in call and we were talking and, uh, cause we had been a second since we'd hopped on the phone and he just wanted to see how I was doing and, and whatnot. And, uh, and I told him this is kind of where my headspace was at with all this stuff. Um, you know, like just with things being crazy. So there's been like more drive-throughs, there's been more, less, you know, less training set. There's just with all the stuff going on but like I still am going to show up and do as well as I can. So like if I'm smashing, you know, Taco Bell, like I still got to like, not like there's still stuff I can control or like, like I can't do a lot of lifts right now, but you bet the same seven upper body pin machines I'm wearing the fuck out right now, like stuff like that. And he said, you know, dude, he said, bro, like that's so underrated and underutilized. Most people have no idea. He said the fact that like your headspace is like, okay, now what, what can I do? Or like, okay, well, this sucks, but this doesn't have to suck. And he, he made it a point to, that I recognized that that skill set and that, um, that very proactive approach with not just being a little bitch um, yeah. Yeah. Is, is huge. And that's what prompted me to make that video. And, and that's why I'm like, it's so, and I'm glad he highlighted those things because like- He's a really good coach, by the way. He, Fucking awesome. I, we appreciate that. He, he's, <laughs> hey, man, he came in. His, it's hilarious. I'm pretty sure I've told you. Like, he came in when he was, like, 18 or 19, and he was like, uh, <laughs> he's like, I was like, so he's like, I want to get stronger on my lifts. I was like, what's, 
what's your lift? He's like, uh, or what are your numbers? He's like, 225. <laughs> He's like 225 everything <laughs> and uh here we are you know like the fucking six monster. Or seven, yeah like four or five years later but um but yeah man like because that's that is something that people need to hear um that there is literally and i know everybody uses the word literally literally all the time <laughs> but i'm going through my head there is no reason for you not to continue to move uh in a direction of strength and health there's always shit you can do like it sometimes that like i i uh i get some responses sometimes from people from people and i'd love to hear what you what you think about it is like oh you know what i'm gonna be move i'm gonna be traveling a lot or i'm gonna be moving around a lot and you know so i don't know if right now is a good time or uh, kind of like, I'm just going to throw in the towel or like things are going to really suck. Oh, yeah. So I'm not sure, you know, what to do or it, just a reason to kind of feel sure. shitty, you know? Yeah. And my thinking is always like, well, you're going to put food in your mouth, right? It, it you have to eat to live. <laughs> you got to eat you're just gonna make like it has no impact i can't even find words to put i know dude in it i'm like yeah. nothing has changed other than you feel bad about some external circumstance yep i have the, the, the one i hear the most is i i'll hear people they say well i can't i haven't been given it my all or i can't give it my all right now so i'm just gonna hold off till i can and i'm like you don't and this is my biggest argument against that that usually stops people in their tracks is we don't take that philosophy with any area of our life. That's like, like you and the wife getting in one argument and having a divorce because you can't have a perfect marriage at every point. Or like we've all like dropped our, our, our iPhones and, uh, and cracked the screen, but they still work. And you still use it. But, yeah. But, but people take, would, would take that same philosophy and go, I'm either all in or all out. And then they bash their phone against the table until that bitch doesn't turn on anymore. But like, yeah. Or, uh, I, I, had, that. I really like that. I got, I got another one. I had a lady. And, well, because here's the thing. People wear it as a badge of honor. I'm all in, all out, bro. And they thump their chest real hard. And, uh, I was, and she was a lawyer. She's a, a client of mine at the time. And she said, and she was like, oh, Jared, I'm a, I'm an all in or all out person. Like, and she was like getting like kind of being a snob about it. Like she's yeah. like, put as a badge of honor. And I go, oh, okay. Okay. Keep in mind. She's validating reason why, why it's okay to fail at the, at the end of the day. And I said, okay, well, let me ask you something. You say you're all in, all out. You're just that person. She's like, oh, yeah. And I go, can I ask you a couple questions then? And keep in mind, she's a client. This wasn't just a random lady. I was just giving a hard time. She was a client. So, like, I consider her paying me to do this. And, uh, and I said, when you were in law school, did you ever get a B? Or did you ever get anything but straight A's? And she's like, oh, yeah. And I said, so why didn't you drop out? And she goes, uh and i go well, you're all in all out remember why did you drop out <laughs> and she goes oh i guess that makes sense i said let's do another one and i said you ever like this is the cheesy one everyone says i said you ever like get a flat tire and yeah. she goes yeah i said so what'd you do she just said fixed it and i'm like why didn't you just like take all the air out of all the other three you're all in or all out and she goes oh and then i gave her the phone screen one and i'm like what about that phone screen you ever cracked it and she's yeah. like yeah and i'm like what'd you do and she's like Hope to God it turned on. I go, so why didn't you just stomp on it till it didn't? Because yeah. you're all in or all out. She goes, oh. Because people take this. Dude. They, we're, we're not all in or all out people. But then when we come to fitness and fat loss, we, we like to use that. words like optimal and like to use words like perfect and like to think we have to be 100% or zero. And that's not how life works. So when dude. you take that philosophy to fitness, you fail. Yeah. Dude, that's so, and, and you're absolutely right. And I had, I, I was looking through um, some of the posts that I really like from yours, uh, your Instagram. And that was one of the ones that really stood out because I think about that all the time. It's like, you, there's no reason to validate your excuses. Um, there's no reason to beat the drum of what sucks. Like, you know, I love that. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's, it's something, uh, uh I think we talked about Abraham Hicks before um, or Esther Hicks, but she says that all the time. And I have to even remind myself 
sometimes of like, um, like if there's any benefit to beating the drum of what sucks and why it doesn't like, why it's not great. And you know, blah, 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 then if there's benefit, then I would say do that all day. But yeah. I'll sometimes ask like, is there, has, have you ever done that and then ended up with a good result? Mm -hmm. no the answer is never and so i think that's really beautiful um and and we're always just like it's it's really silly when we kind of look back at ourselves because we've all done yeah. it of like we validated why we allowed things to stay sucky or why we're not going to do it and then just feel shitty about it like well no reason to even right well even tag along to that one this is another one of my favorite car analogies um we got to have too. one episode just on car just analogies. Just car analogies. Um, oh, no, 100%. Um, but it, like too many, along the same lines, I, I'm shocked at how many people leave failure on the table as a viable option. Like people have a hard time with fat loss or whatever the hell they're trying to do. And because it's not going, they validate failure by going, throwing their hands in there and going, I guess this wasn't meant for me. I guess I'm not supposed to do it. But let's compare this to non-fitnessy scenarios. If, um, if for some reason, if for some reason you got into your car and your, uh, you got into your car and your car didn't turn over, you went to go, blah, and it didn't turn on, you would go, wait a second, that's not right. You'd go, maybe my battery's dead. Maybe I'm out of gas. Maybe there's something unforeseen in that super complex engine of mine that I'm not a mechanic, so I might need to get professional help. Or maybe my alternator shot, whatever. Like, you, the last thing on your mind is maybe driving's not for me. Okay. Maybe I'm meant to be a walker the rest of my life. Damn. You know what? Like, I, like, that like, might be my favorite car analogy from you. <laughs> and, and you know what? You, we were, I was thinking about what we were, uh, or what the title was going to be, but that was one thing that I wanted to bring up. It was like, and I met, texted you the other day. I was like, one thing that I really admire about you and you're really good at is doing those juxtapositions of like, Hey, we just say some random shit about fitness and health and, and we're like, cool. It's all reasonable and rational. But then you, when you put it next to something like that, it makes zero fucking sense. Like, Philosophy should work in and out of fitness. Dude. Like in my, in my opinion, if someone wants to take it like from a principle base, because everything, in my opinion, should be principle-based. Very, like you know, it's why like it's why every diet works, right? Because of the principle of cal calorie deficit, right? Versus like no carbs are bad. Like no, like that's that's a very biased one-sided thing. But from a principle standpoint, it's the same reason. Another car analogy: why uh, we can all drive the same uh, different cars on the road successfully because we have the same principles. The same principles are with cars, trucks, vans, motorcycles, or walking. We start, we're staying on the one side of the road. We stop at the red lights. It's because the principles of driving are the same regardless of the vehicle, yep. right? So that's my thing. It's the same reason why if someone took the extreme of calorie deficit and ate Pop-Tarts and gummy bears, they would still lose weight. Whether that's, that's an extreme, we all know that's dumb. But from a principle standpoint, it's still sound. It's going to work, yeah. And so from a principle standpoint, that's because I think life should be predicated on principles, is when it comes to this stuff, if you compare your scenario to something totally not related, it should still be sound. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, uh, it requires, see, it always, it does come back to like what's going on in here and even at a greater level of like just observing that. And I, and I know you've been doing a lot of this work, so, you know, we can talk about this kind of stuff, but like, um, when you're just, when you can't even pull yourself out of the emotions attached to all yeah. this stuff, you can, it's hard to do that. You know what I mean? And so that's why we always start with like forgiveness and self-compassion because yeah. it's so easy for me to beat myself up about it. Like, you know, back in the day it was fitness back in the day. It was certain aspects of uh, business, like whatever it is or relationship. Right. And when you're in that emotion and you haven't practiced creating that space to see, Hey, like, mm -hmm. I'm not Rambeer. There's this guy, Rambeer. What is he thinking and feeling? And why is he so upset? And I can just sit here and observe that. Then, you know, I can start to like do some things. And it's, oh, yeah. I, I really like that you're, you know, that's what you're, I've never, I don't think I've heard anybody before say that where it's like your philosophies, but it's so 100% too. Your philosophies should work in and out of fitness. So 
Uh, it's like, um, I always viewed it as like in school when, they, when you, we first learned about ang angles, if you have like a ramp that's like a 30 degree angle, like it doesn't matter how big it is. It could be 80 feet long or like half an inch. A 30 degree angle is a 30 degree angle no matter the size of it. And that's the way I've always thought about that is, is your, are your principles the same and do they work regardless of the size? It, and the problem is assholes take that. And they're like, so you're saying calorie deficit and like yeah. Pop-Tarts and gummy bears? I'm like, no, fucker. Yeah. <laughs> but like from a principal standpoint, it should work. Yeah. Uh, those things, that's always funny. So that's why I always say like, I don't, I'm not trying to convince anybody. So like if somebody wants to be the fucking guy who's like, oh, well, you're saying this, 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 then for that, we'll just be like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> There's a great. See, I'll argue uh, with him. I'll be like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> like, hey, we need we need both kinds of people. So you know, well, I'm I, like I like I'm not gonna do that. I'll just be like, okay, whatever. But we need people to also be like, no, listen, like, shut yeah. the fuck up. <laughs> You're not making any sense. All right. See, I usually like lately, like normally when it comes to shit like that, like like with keyboard warriors and shit, I would like. I used to like feel like I had. Here's more changes. I used to feel like I had to convince them. And then I started validating it with like, I would actually go back and forth with them for the reason of other people watching the conversation. But I think I just use that to validate arguing. But then now I'm like the king of passive aggressive sarcasm. I like that. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> like, like, I don't know. I don't know if it's good or bad, but like right now, like someone will take something so out of context. So I say, wow, congrats. You won the first place trophy for taking this totally out of context. Yeah. And then that's the much as I'll do it. Yeah. But no, I probably should just good. leave it alone. <laughs> It's good. It's uh, uh, I'm working long, on it. As long as you're having fun with it, that's the main thing. <laughs> you know, you're not going to convince that person anyway. I no. I I feel that because I used to be like I would think like oh I should correct this person because other people might read it. But then I was like, if somebody's going to listen to that and they're going to be like yeah, then I'm be like uh, well both of those guys can both stay fat and weak. Like I don't yep. like I don't have anything to prove. Like I know what the fuck I'm talking about. You know. Yeah. Um, which. Which uh, leads me, so I, I, I have a couple of questions specific. Uh -oh. um, and so- You say it with a smirk, it's concerning. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason is this, because I, uh, I, I know you've been uh, looking at Kyle Cease's stuff, and one thing that fits so beautifully with kind of how I do things, is you know how he, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but he goes, I don't come in with a game plan. I just try to come in and be present. and the right shit comes out. Um, I haven't heard him say that, but I do that. Like, I hate doing uh, podcasts or videos with notes. The actual vast majority of the content I make, I make on the spot. I may, I come to mind, it comes to mind like in the shower or whatever, or when I film most of my podcasts, I might, the most I'll do is I might have five bullets. Yeah. And that's it. But otherwise, yeah, I totally agree with that. Well, I, and I really like that because, you know, like I've been writing down some stuff, but it, it came out of the shit you were saying, like the things that we were talking about. So um, the first thing, uh, and I'm going to ask you your own questions later on because you ask these questions all the time, but I don't know if you uh, answered them or them. I'm sure you, you answered them, but you don't get asked them. So uh, that will be interesting. But um, this came to my mind. Uh, there's this quote. Are you an Indiana Jones fan? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I haven't, like, seen the movies, but, like, yeah. I know exactly who he is. Okay, cool. All right. So, you know Indiana Jones is this world-famous yeah. archaeologist, right? And so, uh, this, in the uh, uh, Legend of the Crystal Skull, or the, the last one, the one that people apparently hated, uh, with Shia LaBeouf, unfortunately. I thought it was a lot of fun, but, hey. There is a scene where him and Shia LaBeouf rip through a library uh on a motorcycle and one of the students uh who happens to be tom hank's son in real life uh he he asks him a question and he asks him the question and he answers it and then as indiana jones is leaving he says um if you want to be a good archaeologist you got to get out of the library and to, so what when i was watching that and i was thinking to myself if you, let me see, I, I, I wrote this down. Uh, <laughs> if you want to lose fat and keep it off, you got to get off Instagram and start counting some calories and get in the gym. Uh, so I don't have time. 
Yeah. So, cause so my, what I want to ask you is like, what do you think about that? Um, because you, like you're saying, there's so many people who will stay on Instagram looking at everything, the optimal shit, arguing with people, yep. but all they got to do is get the fuck out and just fucking mm -hmm. track, some, track some calories or do whatever the fuck you feel like doing. Yeah. Get out of the library. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, it's interesting. I, I made a post about this the other day. Um, cause like, I love, like, you and I both, I'm sure, like, I know you're, I'm sure you're a fan of them. Like, like there, there was like dope ass quotes, but then like, they're the quotes that are like cheesy as fuck that no one like actually takes to heart that are like really good philosoph philosoph or philosophical quotes. Well, I made a post the other day. I said, Hey, you know that cheesy saying that like, uh, you can either find reasons or find excuses. Well, that one's actually true. Yeah. Um, because like, I think like we talked about on our last little get together you uh you said what are you looking it, it comes down to what you're looking for like if you're looking like every, as i tell people assume that everything you want is right in front of you but like it's what you're looking for if, if you're looking for reason it's right there in front of you but if you're looking for a reason not nah, it's right there too but like then you have all the science of your reticular activating system and all that stuff but it uh but like everything like if you walked out your door and said i who I have to find a dollar bill on the ground. I have to find a $1 bill. You would somehow look over every piece of trash, but you would find that $1 bill within an hour because yeah. you're looking for it. Yeah. But it's the same thing as people are wanting to find When people say stuff like that, I, in my opinion, they, they, they aren't truly looking for what they think they are. They're like, they're, when people start validating failure, that's the other thing is um, I'm a big fan of ownership. And most people, when they make excuses, they, make it as if they're not in control so they don't have to own up to it and be held accountable for their actions it's like if you get pulled over everyone's like oh sorry officer i didn't know i was speeding hoping the officer is like oh he didn't know i'll let him off the hook it's the same thing if you don't know in our heads i'm convinced we feel like we're not liable right so when people say oh i don't have time they're not held liable now because that was their out but if it's but all excuses are is validating failure so when someone is saying, like, I had someone the other day, I made a post on TikTok and someone's like, I don't have time to count calories. I'm like, you're on TikTok, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> if you have time <laughs> to, if you have time to be on like anything, like, fuck, like my fitness pal is right next to Instagram. Like exactly. you can make it like, like I made, I made a, another post. I said, Hey, if you have, and I was trying to like play up, if you don't have time to count calories, I was like, if you don't have time to count calories, why the fuck are you on Instagram? Yeah. Because it's one of those things where I think people are believing things that do, that don't serve them. Yeah. But I think then people are just fine trying to find ways to validate failure because when they validate it, they're not held liable. Dude. And that's why those, those, you know, putting these things like right next to each other is so helpful because usually nobody does that. Like yeah. they'll, some, if somebody says, Oh, I'm super busy. I don't have time. Nobody says to them, well, open your phone and look at the usage, app usage, because it'll give you the time. Like, all yeah. you got to do, I got to, this could be uh, embarrassing. I think all of them do like, it now. Yeah, like, I go to the left, it tells me what was my screen time and how much time I spent in each app. So it's like... There's like three hours a day on Instagram or something. Dude, it's like, it, what yeah, the it, fuck? <laughs> it, it, it can be embarrassing. I'm not going to show mine, but... Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> Someone can easily say, oh, I don't have time. Work is crazy. And everyone's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. But, you know, you have, you have to do that. You have to. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is, and by the way, if someone's on TikTok, they're spending way more than 30 minutes. Like, no it's, shit. It's crazy. It, can't, it gets you. I don't know what it is. It's like, let me ask you a question. Who's your favorite TikTok person right now? Uh, to be hey. honest, uh, so I, what's funny is like, I actually spend most of my time when I'm on TikTok, if I'm scrolling, I spend it more on the for you page versus the following. Um, um, I, I, I might follow, like I barely follow anybody, but to be honest, um, this sounds really cheesy. I think, uh, cause I, I base my content off of what's trending. So like, if I hear like, like, cause I, I do it most really for like, like I'll have fun with it, yeah. but I'll like find like, I might have a, like a five ways to combat cravings or like five something. And, uh, but I'll want to find what song is trending. So I'll like scroll through and it's like, Oh, eight people have played that song. I'll put it with that. Uh, but I mostly do that. But like, uh, 
I don't know. There's there's a reason the top ones are the top. Like I think I don't know why. I'm not even a big dance dude, but <laughs> the reason Charlie D'Amelio is at the top of the at the rankings. But yeah, uh, she's dope as fuck. Yeah. But um, but a lot of times I'll, I'll I don't know. I'll base content off or the style of the content off of what's trending. So I spend most of the time on the for you page. Got it. Got it. No, that's good. It, well, man, there's there's a lot of good people on there. It's it's a fun mm-hmm. it's a fun little thing. Um, which you know so what i was going to ask you next was like so someone's like oh i don't have time and you show them like how can they you know like become more aware how do you get someone because then the thing that happens is like you start to just feel either you're like fuck you jared or you're like oh my god like i i feel so shitty and guilty like how do i get to like you know, okay, now that I'm aware, how do I get to spending those 10 seconds, literally 10 seconds on my fitness pal versus, you know, however much time I'm spending elsewhere? Like, mm-hmm. how, how do I take a person from A to B? I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with number one, how open are they? If someone is like so shut down and closed that their, their headspace, there's nothing. Like, that horse does not want to drink. I cannot force it. You know what I mean? Um, I think a lot of it has to do with with how open someone is to changing their way of thinking. But then I think I'm, I mean, for most people, you can't argue with data. It's like, no, bro, you literally spent 24 hours last week on Instagram, like 24 hours on Instagram. Like it's, it's like the same thing when someone's wanting to rein in their budgeting and like they're wanting to rein in their finances and you find out you spend like three grand a month on drive throughs where it's like, I spent, there's no way, but it's like, Hey, sorry. That's like what, what it is. Facts. I think a lot of it is, is, is you can't argue with facts when someone's like, well, I do this. And like, actually, like, it's the same thing with anything else. Like someone will say, well, Jared carbs store fat because of insulin. And I'm like, well, so you're telling me if, if all you ate every day was a 50 calorie bag of Skittles, you, you gain weight. Well, no, but like, well, no, no, that's not what you said. You said carbs store fat and sugar stores fat because of an insulin response. So like, if all I ate was 50 calories of Skittles every day, would I store fat? Well, I guess not. Because, and a lot of it I think is, is uh, if you come, come from it from a factual side and not necessarily attacking either, because I think a lot of people just get, throw they're their hands up and they feel it. like, they're, yeah. But, where it's, where, but if you just did that, you're like, someone sits down with you and says, Rambeer, I, I, I don't have time to do that shit. And you're like, well, well can, can I see your phone for a second? Well, okay. Bro, you spent like three hours a day on Instagram. No, that can't be. I'm like, bro, your phone says it. Like, it's it's not like, lying. <laughs> I mean, it's like Santa, bro. It knows. Like, and uh, and then I think along those lines that people start becoming receptive. I do this a lot with uh, relationships with food, because a lot of times taking something like like your food relationships to an extreme, like that's the more extreme of like, no, I just I know carbs don't store don't store fat, but I just feel like they do, where it's almost emotional. Um, when I think hard evidence proves everything because, and that's one of the things I'll do with people who are struggling with their food relationships. Let's say their favorite food is, let's say their, their hot button is a donut like mine and they're eating 1500 calories a day. I'll be, I, I will tell them part of your program is a donut every day. Every day I'm going to get fat. Do you trust me? Yeah. Okay. Donut every single day. And then they see it there. They had a donut every day and they lost weight and they're like, Oh, that's, I yeah. get it now. They have the, Oh, I get it. And I think it's the same thing with this is once someone sees the hard data, like know how many hours you spend on Netflix, how many hours you spend on commercials when you watch TV, how many, uh, how often are you, you know, just shooting shit with your boys that doesn't do anything? How, how often are you, uh, you know, when people tell me like they don't have time to make their bed, I'm like, who are you? (laughs) Are you fucking kidding? Well, life is going to kick you in your balls so hard. And I think a lot of it like is really like, there's like, the tough love side of it, but coming from a place of uh, uh, compassion. Yeah. I think there's a very delicate balance between that. But I think part of it is, is really just showing the data more than anything. See if they're yeah. open for change, because that shows a lot. I had a guy that I was talking to about this exact thing. He couldn't count his calories for, he, I've never seen someone, um, his, let's say his discipline was very, 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 very bad. Made excuses for everything he did. And so before we can even get into the world of tracking calories, I said, bro, I want you to, because we got to get promise keeping under his belt first and just some level of discipline. And I'm a fan when doing that, it's got to be something that takes under 30 seconds that they don't want to do. So making your bed. So I said, bro, I want you to make your bed every single day 
we're going to start there. That's the start to your, cal- your fat loss journey is you're going to make your bed every single day because we're not quite ready for calorie counting and food yet. And this dude argued with me for five minutes why he couldn't make his bed every day. And I'm like, How? you said it takes you eight minutes to make your bed? Well, then get up eight minutes earlier. Like, no, you don't understand. Like, like, it's just hard for me. I'm like, I don't give a shit. Make your, I said, this is why you have so much trouble losing weight. I said, this is why your standard's terrible. Like, yeah. you know, it's, and I think it comes down to it. I'm about to make this big post. Like the reason you're not losing weight isn't because of a calorie deficit. It's because you uh, leave dishes in your sink at night. You don't change the toilet paper roll. Your bed stays unmade and the cart and, and, and you don't need to put your cart up in the grocery store because it's not your job. Like, dude, that's why you don't lose weight. It's because your standard sucks. Dude, that's so fucking money. Like, <laughs> I yeah that is that's just gold right there man you're talking about principles you know um you, you, I don't know the sh- like real short and sweet the the olive wreath around the hippo for San Jose Barbell the logo the olive wreath st- stands for principles um, really? and, and virtues um you know the the story is the short version is you know when Xerxes arrives at Thermopylae there's no men there. And he says, where's all the men? Um, and then one of the generals says, they're all at the Olympics. And he says, what did they, what, what did they win? And he says, um, an olive wreath. And the, one of the other generals is like, he's like shocked and terrified. Cause he's like, who are these men who are not competing for material things, but for virtue. Right. And so, mm. um, you saying that I'm like, damn, that's so fucking key is like, it's not the fucking calorie deficit. It's your, it's your principles or lack of awareness that, yeah. you know, that there are no principles. And I think everybody wants that. It's just that, you know, they've been feeling so bad yeah. about themselves or whatever it is or who they're around. It's like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta find those principles, you know? This is also why I'm convinced fitness and fat loss stuff is the catalyst to massive success in the rest of your life. If you want to become a better dad, a better wife, a better husband, a better friend, a better salesman, a better mechanic, whatever, because um, I, I'm, it's, 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 it's almost like that thing, like people are like, oh, money makes changes people. It's like, no, that just shows who they really are. Fitness and fat loss just shows who you are. It shows if you, there, because everyone knows no one wants to diet. You're not always gonna be fired up to train. It's literally the key to saying, let's see how your self-discipline and promise keeping skills are. And, and it shows you all of it. So once you, it's like self-discipline and uh, all these characteristics and virtues are like a muscle. Like if you're a strong individual, it doesn't matter if you're like vacuuming or driving or picking something up, you're a strong individual doing it. And it applies to everything, whether you're pushing a car or pushing dumbbells or cleaning a window. Like if you're strong, it affects everything you do in the same way. If you become ungodly disciplined and just like a monster with your promise keeping and self-discipline skills, you're telling me you're not going to be a better husband, a better salesman, a better, a better mechanic, a better friend. And it just applies to everything else, yeah. you know? Yeah. Dude, fuck. That's, that's really fucking good. And, you know, this is so, like, if, if anybody sees, like, oh, like, I'm always, you know, dressed Excellent. up. I'm in the fucking gym, um, deadlifting in gym. And <laughs> I love it so much. But that, <laughs> that, that, that thinking came from, like, hey, you know what? I, I am going to hold myself to a higher standard. And, you know, there's, t- there was not that it's wrong to wear like sweats or workout stuff, but it's like, you know, you have a, a way of thinking about things. And so there was, there was a big stretch of my life where I was just fucking, I literally dressed like a fucking bum and something didn't feel good. Like something was not right. And it was because I was not taking care of this mm. you know, grooming, uh, you know, clo- like you're saying, like, you're, are you organized? Is your house clean? Is your car clean? Or is everything just fucking everywhere? And so then, of course, you don't have time to work out because your life is a mess and you don't fucking, you're just making it that much harder on yourself. So I think that that right there, man, and you said you mentioned, all right, for some people, this might be going deep. But if you're going to be listening to us, like, you know, I think you got to be prepared to, to get, Hell yeah. like go fucking deep. This is not like surface That's level foul. bullshit. Um, you said ungodly discipline. And, and so what popped into my mind is like, um, 
especially since you've been, you know, I, I know you do the work. It's like, well, if you believe in, in God or the universal power or nature, have whatever name you want to give it. It doesn't matter if you believe in that. And, and it's this all pervasive, uh, you know, limitless, powerful thing. Sure. Right. Um, and you can also look at the scientific perspective, right? They, they also say like at one point, every atom was, you know, connected and still is. That means you are the substance of God, right? So yeah. it, it's not only is it, um, it's like taking it from God, uh, ungodly. It's like, no, you, it is godlike. Like, yeah. think about what would... I don't know where that term came from. I'm just meaning the ridiculous. No, no, no. It makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. And it makes perfect sense. Like, it's a funny... It's funny, like, how we say it, but it makes perfect sense. Um, but, like, in my mind, you know, uh, it's like, if, if, I ha if I have an image or a, a picture of, of a god, what does that look like? And, and if I can recognize that I am that... Mm -hmm. We're going fucking super deep for some people. Like I love this dude. This is so good. <laughs> would I not pursue it in that way? Like, would I yeah. not? You know, or would I? Or if, or would I be making excuses? Like, I can't make my bed. I'll argue with you for five minutes about making my bed, but could have made your bed. <laughs> could have made my bed. Could have made ten beds in that time. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. No, it's so good. That was, I don't know if some people will be able to get the depth of that, but I'm just going to pause and have a sip of this Diet Coke right here. You mean the cancer juice? Yeah, the cancer juice. You uh, might as well have coronavirus up in there, bud. <laughs> don't even get me started on the coronavirus. <laughs> me neither, me neither. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe we'll make that the last, last question. Um, Get get your thoughts on the coronavirus. Um, I don't know if you want them. <laughs> like, <shit. laughs> the when I come out there, you and I gotta have a cigar and just sit down and just have dude, some deep convos, dude. No, we hundred um, percent. And I saw you were you had cigar and whiskey the other night, or like a week ago or something. I didn't have whiskey. It was a just cigar. It was. I think it was. I think it was just a cigar and diet diet uh, like a diet coke, but. Um, I, that's something recently I found out. I really enjoy cigars. Dude, that's funny. I always have, when I have a cigar, I always have a Diet Coke. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, so, see, here's the thing. When it comes, fun fact about Jared, when it comes to alcohol, your boy is a little bitch. Um, <laughs> as in, I'm a lightweight as fuck and I'm uber picky. Like, I'm either drinking like margarita gr girly ass pina colada bullshit or like Jack and Coke. Yeah. Um, but a lot, but the thing is like, if I don't, I just don't like to drink that often. I'm not a big yeah. drinker, and then like it has calories, so like I would rather eat those. Um, and cigars don't have calories, so nope. <laughs> dude, that's hilarious. That is exactly the thinking that I operate, and I've been sharing Let's this go. with people. Like, people are like, people want to talk about alcohol and whatnot. I'm like, look, you got to first reevaluate because you're saying a shitty time of getting fucked up and like feeling shitty is better than looking good to me. My I've realized my operating system is now from like, I'm going to make decisions based on what's going to make me look and feel better. So yeah. exactly what you said, cigars have zero calories. Mm -hmm. Diet Coke has zero calories. I might have one whiskey, maybe, but those have calories. So I'm probably going to pass, you know? Um, that's I gotta be in the, I gotta be in the mood to drink too. Like I can't like, just like, that's the, like I just couldn't just be like, Oh, you're going to be here. Like I, I, I have buddies that can, and, but like I can't I've got to be in like a weird special like hell yeah mood yeah and I'm all like cloud nine all the time but like I got to be in a mood especially for hard liquor I got to be like in a certain yeah like whatever which is not a thing very often but anyway I like that um unsung heroes of fat loss that's a good question Took it from <laughs> our last one bro um, I, to be honest, I really think, and this is kind of what Johnny and I were talking about. I think a lot of the, the strategies that I'm having to implement right now are a lot of my, so to speak, unsung heroes of fat loss, because, um, like just the concept of eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full and go get food when you're hungry again. Like, I think that concept would fix most people's problems. Like when you, when you're like, like, you know, the, the fact, the amount of people who force feed themselves to finish a plate 
is just ridiculous. And I was, and that's the thing is I was, I, I grew up in a place where like scarcity mode all the time where it's like, no, we paid for that. You got to eat all of it. And I'm like, but I'm full mom and dad. Like, and then I, I grew up in that. And it's one of those things where if you're not hungry, stop eating. And it's not any less wasteful. Like you're telling me if you eat the extra whatever, like in it, let's say it puts you into a calorie surplus, like that stored as fat any is not any less waste than if it goes in the trash can, you know? Um, but I, th- I think one of the biggest unsung heroes is the concept of just stopping when you're full, but eating when you're hungry. I think what, that's a huge one. When do you think, cause I'm the same way. It actually, I think for me, it was very recently where I started to actually live that it's something that I've coached for a long time and understood. Um, but when do you think, that kind of you became like it became something that you were living because I think everybody like very few people are actually aware of oh I'm full I'm gonna stop everyone's just Mm -hmm. and people wear it as a badge of honor like oh I can eat this much and like what does that mean Mm -hmm. like you're the guy who can finish everything like what (laughs) (laughs) well so I like to use it a lot like so even like right now like of course, I, I try to, I, I ca- I'm a big fan of calorie tracking. So like, like when I'm, di- like right now I'm dieting, I'm doing all my stuff. Um, I'm tracking all my stuff in calories and, and whatnot. But like, if I'm in a situation where like, let's say I go to a, like a get together and I don't want to count calories or I'm not going to, or like right now with this deal with my knee, there's been the hard, the number one hardest thing I've with my knee being injured that I can do because I'm on crutches at all times is a uh, cook. It's the hardest thing I can do. So what my wife has been doing, she's been amazing. And she'll basically went and prepped a ridiculous amount of food for me. But then uh, right after I got injured, then like her mom got in a horrendous car accident. So she had to go take care of her mom and help her. So I've been like, yeah, you do go do, go do whatever. And so I was fending for myself. And like I said, like for me, trying to cook has a massive chance of injury right now. So what I, so throughout that time, like your boy was, I was going out to eat a lot more. I was smashing food here and there or whatever. And uh, if I knew I was in a spot where I knew I wasn't going to be accurate with food and esti- and I didn't, you know, I knew estimations were off or whatever the case was, I just stopped when I was full. I wait. I knew, I knew if, if my numbers were going to be off, I'd usually wait to eat. So I'd wait till I'm hungry. Like today I didn't eat till like three o'clock because I just wasn't hungry. And then, um, then what if I do go to a, a place where I'm, you know, like a vacation or a, an event, I just stop when I'm full. Yeah. And then I don't go back until I'm hungry again. Yeah. versus like, oh no, my dieting switches off, self-sabotage mode. And that's what most people do. And then it's like, okay, I got stuck got over Monday. because, And then they go into scarcity mode because they can't yeah. have those certain foods. And they, it's this vicious cycle versus, yeah. you know, uh, you shouldn't be force feeding yourself. Yeah. No, I like that. That's good. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a tough uh, well, see, here's here's like me catching myself. It's actually not tough. It's like, oh, I actually want to feel good. So, but mm-hmm. we make we make it into a tough thing. Um, but I, I, I'm like, it always comes down to like, do you want to feel better? Because if you want to feel better, you'll ask different questions and you'll get different answers. And, and like I mentioned last time, I'm convinced that most people don't truly want what they say they want. Otherwise, behavior would change. You know, it's like the, the, the two things that, that function, every, every person, everyone from, I don't care what anybody believes in, from um, Mother Teresa to Donald Trump to you to me, we all, are fun, we all function off the same things. We try to seek, play, seek uh, pleasure and avoid pain. That's it. Those are the only two things that, that really drive most people is the concept of avoiding pain or seeking pleasure. Yep. Um, there's a book I'm reading right now that that's what they're talking about is, um, like and they use that exact example like donald trump and uh, mother and uh, mother Teresa. it's like people are like those are nowhere near the same and uh but like that's at the end of the day it's what but most people view pain and pleasure differently this might be a good 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 segue um as in like let's talk about drugs like drugs bad drugs um like for some people they view drugs as a uh, to a way to escape pain like fucked up headspace let me just go play with some heroin and I'll be fine. But other people may have grown up with a drug addict dad and they may look at drugs and see massive amounts of pain, but it's drugs. So which is it? Is it avoiding pain or avoiding pleasure? Like, what is it? But a lot of it's how you view it in your head. So like for you, for example, a lot of people, you, you view it as like your pleasure is feeling good and looking good and functioning good and having a high level operating system. That's your pleasure. But some people look at that and be like, man, that's painful getting that. I don't want anything to do with it. 
But at the end of the day, a lot of that's defining what is our pain and pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's really, really good. And dude, that's why I'm like, look, if you can't, for somebody who's listening and like, maybe you're struggling, like if you can't ask yourself or if you don't know what question to ask, that's why you got to work with somebody, you know, yeah. it, it, whether it's a, a therapist, uh, I know there's good therapists out there, like, or if it's a strength coach or a nutritionist, it doesn't matter. And you'll know because you'll feel it. Like you'll feel, Oh, I have yeah. some, like, there's a good connection here. Like I feel good when I'm talking to this person, you gotta, you gotta want to ask the right questions. And if you don't know how find somebody who can help you. Um, mm-hmm. so the 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 next thing was speaking about questions um what questions do you mr jared hamilton think that people aren't asking that they should be asking man you still on my good shit bro <laughs> <laughs> um to be honest i think it's the opposite of everything everyone is asking um as in when someone's like what's the quickest way to lose weight because i got vacation in three weeks it's like what's the opposite of that oh how can i lose weight slow and long term but like, it's not all the stuff people should be asking is not exciting or sexy. Yeah. It's like, people are like, uh, a, 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 a common question I get that I never thought would be common is what is the least amount of calories I can eat to lose weight? I'm like, you're just trying to suffer. Like, what's the m- least amount I can eat versus it should be the other question. How much can I get away with eating Absolutely. while losing weight? Like, I think a lot of it is for the people listening as a general rule of what's the polar opposite of the question that you're asking yourself right now. That's a, it's that's a beautiful like people, people go for it. Go ahead. You can go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I was just, I was just going to say, and that's why I wanted to ask you your own questions because I wanted to know what you thought. And that answer is a hundred percent on the money. It's <laughs> such a good answer. Um, the question is whatever question everybody is asking, it's the opposite of that question. So it's the inverse, yeah. Uh, People trying to be like, "Hey, how can I go smash t- uh, seven days of the week at the gym?" I, but like, how, what's the least amount of days you can hit at the gym? You know, and like get results. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's um, I'm telling you, it's it's the inverse of whatever trendy questions someone is asking. Um, yeah, and you know, I've been thinking about that. Uh, a lot of the mainstream, like pretty much, if anything is mainstream, you you need to go away from that. You know, like what coronavirus, I, what like like coronavirus, like Jesus Christ. Uh, we'll, we'll, we, will, we will touch on that. Uh, but uh, you you remember? Did you ever watch uh, Seinfeld? Uh, my dad was a big Seinfeld guy, but I never was. All right. So you know George Costanza? <laughs> I think so. He's, which one was he in there? He's the which, short which bald one is guy. He? Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A- yep. Anyways, long story short, he does – there's an episode where he, like, he's always, like, you know, bumbling and, like, never getting the girl, and he's in all these, you know, situations. And then one day – Jerry tells him like, why don't you just do the opposite of everything you're doing? Because everything you're doing isn't working. And so he starts truth, the exact opposite. <laughs> and he like, he gets this amazing girl. Uh, he gets a job with the New York Yankees working next to Steinbrenner. Like all of this crazy That's stuff great. happens. It's a good but philosophy though. It's a great philosophy. Dude, like, like a, a mentor, like, like a mentor of mine years ago, like when I started getting into the world of like, just becoming successful and maxing out, you know, areas of my life and like really pushing my potential and like seeing what I can actually do. A big thing they're like is, dude, what are all your broke friends doing? Okay. They're getting drunk on the weekends. They don't read books because they're not in school anymore. They don't have mentors and they spend money on stupid shit. I'm like, she's like, just do what they don't do. And I'm like, oh, or if all, if, if every successful millionaire does these seven things, maybe I should do what those, those things people do. Or like, that's why I have a podcast, like the common traits of successful dieters. But like, if all your friends, you know, that are suffering are eating low, super low calories, they do way too much training of, as a whole, they uh, are cutting entire food groups out and they say donuts are cancer. Like, why don't we, if you don't want to be what your overweight suffering friends are doing, let's see what, yeah. uh, you know, what's, what's the opposite. It's, it's actually, I really like that philosophy. <laughs> Uh, it's you know what it appeals to the rebellious voice in me um like i never wanted to do uh what everybody else is doing um so and i think there's there's uh there's merit to that as well where it can help you but um 
uh, yeah, like it, it's, uh, it, you mentioned earlier, like if your boys are drinking and whatnot, I'm like, This is this might be a little bit of a side note, but if your life involves hanging out with the boys like frequently, I, there's probably some areas where you can improve because usually when you use that word and what's associated with it, it's like it's probably drinking, eating too much food, a lot of non activity, yelling at sports games, like none of those things uh, are complaining about yeah. your wives and girlfriends like those things are not contributing to successful no. happy life so let's try the opposite let's let's not go around that as much you know um well and you can always go get new boys and instead of the normal bar go to the bar that has plates on it and exactly. when you say i'm going to the bar with the boys it's a deadlift session at san jose barbara like, yeah ab <laughs> absolutely um <laughs> Uh, damn, man, there's a lot of good shit. I'm going to have to rewatch or re-listen to this myself. Um, cause I'm going to use a lot of the stuff that you were talking about. Um, I had, I did have a, some other random questions. Uh, well, let's go with this one. What is your favorite or what, do, what thing do you find yourself, uh, interested in outside of health and fitness um on on like a as a instagram like topic or theme because i've tried to cut out as much fitness stuff as possible um just reason being like i want my brain to think in different ways um sure. so what's something that's interesting to you that you you know look at outside of fitness um just like anything from like a hobby and just overall interest kind of thing yeah like i love um, legos you love like that's, that's <laughs> fucking dope uh so um i love watches i'm big well i love like like i've been i've been i've been trying to see what you you've been, you got on I, I love i love watches so um you ever want to see something really cool go pick like a super high-end like watch brand like like ap's or you know like a whatever like a handmade like really nice like audemars watch and go watch their youtube videos and it is like, you want to see like what true intention and attention to detail means. It's just fascinating. So, work. um, yeah, bro, it's insane. Uh, but no, I, I love watches. Like I love watches a lot. That's um, dope. I, um, like, like I'm probably going to be that guy with like a ridiculous watch collection. Like, like just like, that's, you know what? I, I, <laughs> I was never into watches uh until my wife got me this one uh um, what is that this is a tiffany's automatic st it's all stainless steel and i'm like i'm just like and she kind of explained to me what you're talking about of the crafts work and like yeah the detail and the intention and i'm like i don't know it just kind of speaks to me mm -hmm. and i'm like you i used to think about watches and jewelry and things in a different way but now it, it's just uh there's something different and I, and I feel that. So that's a, that's a recent interest of mine as well. So that's awesome. That's dope. I mean, there's, there, there's a, there's a Tassat that I'm looking at right now that, that I want to pick up, but I could, I do. I, lo I just love watches. Um, I, to be honest, I'm like that dude that loves watches and luxury cars. Like, like that cost about the same, like, <laughs> yeah. um, but you know, like, um, like I like uh, though those are two, like from a stereotype, it's kind of stereotypical, like in the whole like success world, but no, I'm yeah. like, like Lamborghini and like the story behind Lamborghini to me is fascinating. And like, I've got like a mini like hot wheel collection of only like <coughs> luxury cars that I like would go, like I will make a trip to the store just to get a new hot wheel to add to like my luxury hot wheel yeah. collection. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, Hey, you know, that's dope. And it kind of like connected to what you were saying earlier. It's not the thing it's, you know, who you're being around that thing or while you're doing that thing. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of people who will buy the car or buy the watch or whatever to show to other people something or get something from other people. But, you know, and that's how I used to think about a lot of things, but then I'm like, Oh, there's, there's a story. There's a, there's a mm -hmm. art here. There's like, like depth and intensity and focus. Like somebody put their being into creating this beautiful piece of art really and uh so it's like yeah that that totally makes sense um yeah yeah 
I don't, I don't know if it's considered in the fitness world, but the, the other last major thing that like I really, even like whether it be on Instagram or like doing myself, it's kind of in the fitness world, but in my head, it's outside is, uh, is jujitsu. Absolutely. I've been, I've been, I've been rolling back on, on the mats for like about a year and a half. Yeah. Um, that's how I blew my knee actually a freak accident, but that's when it happened. It was on my yeah. blue belt test and it went, but, um, but like, I love, but, but for, for me, jujitsu is not, it's not, it's outside fitness. Yeah. Cause to be honest, um, it's really easy for me to get burned out with fitness right now yeah. because, um, it, I grew up doing it, loving it, but then I started working in it. Then I got, then for a while I thought I was a bodybuilder. So then it was like a whole nother level of it. Yeah. Um, and then like I started training people and coaching people. And so then like on top of, you know, back when all I did was in-person sessions, I used to do like 200 sessions a month. So yeah. I would, like sign up to sun. Yeah, dude. I was in the gym training people from like, it like started at 4.30 AM and like would leave at 9 PM. Like it was insane. And then my own workouts on top of it. So for, so what's, what's interesting is like, it's actually really easy for me to get burnt out on fitness. Yeah. But when I got back on the mats, I remember, cause that's actually what led me to get back into jujitsu. I was like, when was the last time? Cause I realized I didn't really have a hobby, but I love hobbies that have a growth attached to it. Not okay. just like, not, not like, not that going fishing is wrong or like, you know, taking your dog for a walk, but like there's no growth attached to certain hobbies. And the fact that there's so much growth and uncomfortableness and being uncomfortable uh, with jujitsu and failure and learning. Um, I got thinking, I'm like, when was the last time I was just legitimately loving some hobby? And it was when I was on the mats. And that's when I got back a hold of my old jujitsu it, buddies and, and stuff. It, it forces you to really become present, right? Um, yeah. Do you consider it like as a form of like meditation almost? Uh, oh, bro. I don't, bro. don't want to put it's... like these trendy words and things. No, like, not at all. It forces you to become present. Like you cannot be present. No, dude, you want to talk about having to contain your emotions and panic. Like, uh, like you literally have a 200 pound, two pound dude sitting on top of you. You cannot breathe. And now you have five minutes left. And he's about to choke the shit out of you. Like part of it is you have to become really present. You have to keep emotions calm. You have to keep thoughts clear and make decisions quickly um, and lose and be okay with losing and then coming back or, you know, whatever it's um, there's so many mental benefits from jujitsu that uh, it's, it's crazy. Think of just like really, really intense chess that like you might go unconscious, <laughs> like, yeah. um, but no, it's, it's uh, if, if even like just if there, cause there's so many, much going on like if like it was a bad day or something's going on like I can't think about it and win a match like it's not oh. how that works you've got to be unbelievably present but also very very level-headed and energy stays as level as possible actually there is a there's a coach of mine that he comes to teach at the school that I go to and he talked about this um and I think you can take this analogy to many places in life but he was talking about in jujitsu where a lot of people go wrong is you need to have like a knob, like, you know, like stereos, they have a, a knob from like zero or like say one to 10. A lot of people when they get hurt is they are a 10. You see this with like, they call it spastic white belt syndrome where they just go and like, ah, and they just go nuts. And that's how people get hurt versus if you ever watch, if, if you, you should do this sometime, or if you've ever seen it, you ever see like two like world champion jujitsu uh, jiu guys go, they barely sweat and they nose breathe the whole time. It almost is boring. It's like, Oh, I'm about to see two world champs throw down. It's like, it looks like they're sitting down playing patty cake and like they're calm as fuck. And when the, this coach of mine, he was like, there, don't get me wrong. So there's a time where you got to crank that thing to 10. He said, but you've got to be very good and very intentional um, at, you know, there's times you might be chilling at a one, but then you might need to fly to a 10 and then kick it back to a one because, and it's, it's just being able to be very controlled over your, physicalness your your physicalness that's not even a word your physical state your mental state and where your levels of intention and uh intensity are and then you start doing that stuff well and it life just gets better you know dude that's yeah man that's uh that's a great analogy and and just thing to think about for somebody um and and i think just being active in general it, it, the beautiful thing about it is you don't have to try. I think we're always trying to do yeah. stuff. Um, Chasing, like Kyle puts it. Yeah. And like, you know, even if we're like, okay, well, I need to be, you know, more present and you're still fucking trying, but sport or any physical endeavor, it kind of, you're, you're there. Like, yeah, you, you're in that moment. Basketball is like that for me. Like, really? It's like one of the few places where I can go 
nothing is happening. I'm a hundred percent present. And, uh, that's why I like, look, if you're, if you're feeling, you know, whatever kind of emotions in life or in your health, like just go join something where that feels good to you. And it's physical because you will find your way. Like, Mm -hmm. don't, don't try to control it and force it. Like you're going to find your way. Oh yeah. Um, fucking dope man um <laughs> really really fucking good shit uh that's good i think that's a it's a beautiful a lot, lot of stuff to chew on there <laughs> yeah beautiful beautiful place to end it but i'm definitely looking forward uh whether whether we make a trip or whether you come out here and uh we'll we'll have to do this in person but um yeah man where uh what what info would you like to share? Where can people follow you? All the good, all the good, good stuff. <laughs> uh, easiest place people can find me is probably Instagram at real Jared Hamilton. I went ahead and made my TikTok that because it's just easier. It's yeah. the same thing everywhere. Uh, and I, I always say it's the real one, not the fake one. So yeah. <laughs> some asshole had Jared Hamilton taken and he doesn't do shit with his Instagram. So I'm like, you know he has what? Like one- I'm the real yeah and i'm like i'm like real i'm gonna be real jared hamilton yeah so that's all the famous guys do right they're like the real ranbir yeah. sangera but whatever well, there was also somebody took ranbir sangera so i just added a dot so i was like all right what where okay i is that like a common name like no. in the indian culture like no. what the, <laughs> it's not or is that like your your own fan page is that like somebody's that, fan page I mean, no there's i mean there's people who have the name it's just not super common but hmm that's crazy. But no, probably the easiest spot would be uh, at Real Jared Hamilton on Instagram. Then they can, if they like that, they probably like all the other stuff that I posted there, like a podcast yeah. and all of that stuff. So, yeah. Oh, uh, I would definitely hi- like go check out the podcast. Lots of good stuff on, on Jared's podcast. Um, the one Hamilton thing, Trained Podcast. The Hamilton Trained Podcast. Um, one thing before we end this that I wanted to highlight, which just like, it's, 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 it's like, uh, it highlights for me also your, you know, you living what you're talking about and sharing. Um, and also it goes along with like the principles that we mm-hmm. discuss, like trying to find principles that come out of us that we want to live up to. Um, this man is injured and he is still show. Not only is he doing all the training and, and like the nutrition stuff, but I saw you were at, your jujitsu practice watching yeah i go i go i i still go and watch and and talk to coach and in in the same way i would like be in class ask questions and engage i'll still uh i go and still learn like mentally even if i'm not on the mats dude I, we could go on about that but i just wanted to highlight <laughs> that because you know we started off earlier talking about um you know your this this or that excuse it's like well if your car died you wouldn't just like set your car on fire you would try to figure out <laughs> what else is there right and so yeah. that that was just like i was like damn okay <laughs> that's dope that that i do what you can do bro like god do what you can do so well cool man um i hope uh the one person or the multiple people gathered together had a uh a, a solid time and then uh we will see you on the next one oh yeah dude thanks brother all right bro